So we're, you know, we're getting closer to the end of the, you know, 21 irrefutable laws of leadership, but, and we, we went through law of intuition last time, which if you remember, leaders evaluate everything with this leadership bias. So they see things through and they form a leadership bias. So they see things through the leadership lens. Um, and so this week we're going to talk about the law of magnetism. So the law of magnetism um, says who you are is who you attract. Okay, so speaking of this conversation, uh, who you are is who you attract. Okay, so, you know, if, you know, you're saying to yourself, like, I want, you know, someone that works really hard and follows through and gets stuff done and, you know, produces well and, you know, all these things, and you you list this, you know, long laundry list. The first thing you have to say, well, is that, am I that kind of person? <laughs> That's true. Like, do we have that kind of environment that is conducive to attract those kinds of people? And if the answer is we're not, then the odds of us attracting those kind of people is probably pretty slim yeah. because who you are is who you're going to attract. Yeah. If you're a conniving sort of manipulative you know, type of person, that's exactly what you're going to attract. That's true. Which is exactly how I ran the version 1.0 of Integrity Capital. I wasn't honest. I wasn't, I was conniving. I was manipulative. I was a user of people. And that's exactly what I attracted. <laughs> that's the staff I built. It's the culture we had. It's, it's everything. It was all there, right? And so, and I was always frustrated, like, why don't we have these great people? It's like, because well, you're not. <laughs> like, you can't expect to get great people unless you're willing to do the work to build yourself into that kind of person. Um, not that it's perfect by all means now, but it's just a reality that, you know, you can't expect. I mean, it's the same thing when I was looking for a, a bride, you know, it's like, well, I want this kind of person who is really deeply involved in their faith and they have to be transparent and da, 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 da. But I had to build myself to be that kind of person. I even tell single people, I'm like, if you want that kind of person, I said, just be that kind of person. Like, don't go looking for them, just become them. And you will eventually get that kind of person. Like there's mm -hmm. just, that's the best way to go about it. Um, is to be that kind of, if you want a good friend, I used to have a guy who mentored us said, if you want to be, if you want to get good friends, you struggle with friendship. I said, be, be a good friend. Yeah. I said, just you. And I said, here's what it looks like. You know, you're a listener, you care, you're serving other people, you're trying to do things for others, then you will be get good friends. Yeah. Right. And so, um, so what do you guys think about that statement? You are who you, you, who you are is who you attract. Yeah, I think it's a good point because it's almost like model the way. Yeah. You know, it's like mm -hmm. I'm modeling a certain level of excellence. Someone else will be expected to do the same thing. Right. But then they also naturally will do it because they see that you're modeling it. So yeah. it goes in those, you know, the leadership models. Yeah, it does. So yeah. I think it is unique, but also and you like you said, if you're if you're modeling a poor way of and handling people issues or yeah. leadership then probably people just look at you as a leader so they're going to do the same thing it's 100%. just that's just kind of how we're conditioned yeah you follow the leader <laughs> follow the leader <laughs> exactly what about you tom yeah i think that's like that that saying of um you know show me your five friends or five closest friends and i can tell you you know what sort of person you are who you are mm -hmm. um you know it follows it follows that um it's, yeah, no, it's a, it's an it's an interesting thought as to yeah, you know, if you're if we're not finding the people or if we're having you know like I think right now it's fair to say that we're we're attracting the right people and we're attracting the people we want, um, you know, with the with the group that we've got. But yeah, if we're start attracting the wrong people, we should definitely question like, okay, how did that happen? Yeah, uh, not just uh, you know, how, why did that person get in the gate or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good to take a look whenever there's a failure that happens. I always start with me. I'm like, 
what did I do? What did I do wrong? Or how did I blow that? Um, you know, and it's just a good, it's a good thing to start with and go like, kind of like the thing I told you guys on Friday. It was like, I think I saw a character deficiency when I got questioned too many times by the investor. <laughs> and I just realized like, that's not yeah. a good thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. You know. It also comes down to too, like who you are might not attract everyone. Yeah. And so it's okay. Mm -hmm. If who you are attracts a small sample of people yes. that are fantastic people. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's, there's going to be some like, you know, pros and cons to who yeah. we are too, yeah. which is okay. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. There's definitely a, a, when you realize there's a standard yeah. that you set that will by default, definitely, you know, minimize the amount of people. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, you know, John says, if you possess the qualities of the people that you're trying to attract to you, you'll attract them, right? Am I going to be able to model and show the way? So we have to ask ourselves that every, am I, am I going to be able to model this uh, or not? Uh, and, you know, there's a real importance for us. And this comes back to our particular values for our particular firm. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about things like I own it you know, of taking personal responsibility for what it is we're doing, which also means being honest, which means having authenticity about what's going on. And so that's definitely a character trait that we display and want also the people that come on here to display. So that's a funnel you guys have to pull that through and say, do I see that person being like taking personal responsibility? Yeah. Will they own it and go, yep, I was wrong and I own it. Yeah. Okay. And I haven't, I have to display that even to my kids today. You know, Kate was having a rough morning, you know, I was like, you know, and we, we sort of had to walk through some discipline and on the way to school, I said, Hey babe, you know, I don't think I handled that that great this morning yeah. and I'm sorry. You know, and she's like, thanks. And I said, what, what did you learn? Right. And she's like explaining her side too. So you you know it's you have to kind of model it uh, to say yeah I think I didn't handle that that well yeah. um, so I own it is one of those things that we want to have in terms of our DNA yeah. you know the other one is we talk about proactive processes mm -hmm. you know so we're constantly having to ask ourselves like is that really a proactive pro do we have a proactive process yeah. is it not is that really what we want to do and display to people. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you guys think some of the other cultural values that we have in terms of the magnetism that we would have here? What do you think? I think it's like manage, managing priorities. Yeah. Managing priorities is a big one, right? Like every day and week you're going, am I, what, what are the priorities and am I managing them well? Am I not? How do I work on those? Right. Like that's a big one is, and that's constant, yeah. constant, you know, that's definitely part of our DNA for sure. Yeah. What else? What about you, Tom? What's, what's, what are the things that we have or display that we want to pass on? As I, think, part of I think there's so many of them. I think like the 70% and, and run like the, you know, avoiding perfection is a, is a, is a big one. Cause I think that, that, you know that sets a realistic this is this is a realistic expectation but i think it also kind of drives and fuels innovation because if you're constantly thinking like oh i can't do this until it's perfect i can't implement this until it's perfect um you know you just like it just sits on the shelf so um yes yeah the b the b plan moved is better than the a plan dusty on the shelf right like get yeah. things going we're doing that right now with the fund right like it's yeah. We're doing deals, right? A lot of people say, no, 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 you got to wait to get all the fun done and everything's completed and it's got to be all tight and nice. And we're like, no, let's just get deals and let's go. And, you know, so here we are doing one and possibly two here deals here real quick. Yeah. So that's absolutely one of our cultural tenets for sure. What else? What are some other 
things that would be kind of magnetism that we're looking for and funneling through as we're trying to hire people what, that we have? What, what's another thing that we have? I think the idea of like being lean and nimble. Yeah. It's unique because it's, if you think about it from the circles, it's like, and I think we've even fallen victim to this. It's like, go for the cheapest option. Yes. But it yeah. doesn't actually mean that. It doesn't. You know, and it, it means so much more than that, which yeah. is so special. And I think if we can shape, if we can message that the right way, mm -hmm. you're going to get people that are so dynamic in the way they think of things to operate effectively, efficiently, but also not go for like the, you know, the, the Lotus that Tom has versus the, uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's just, it, there's so many things that you can do to be a creative, but also have the same efficiency or better yeah. and not have to exert as much resources. Yeah. 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 It's good. It's a good way to just say we, when we make decisions, it's like, what's the, you always have to recognize like we want to be running with good margin but mm -hmm. at the end of the day we want to invest heavily where we're going to get the best roi like where's the best roi that's the question um and it doesn't necessarily mean it is the ferrari right yeah. but maybe it's the you know honda pilot right like just but it's the idea of where do you get the best roi uh when all is said and done so it's a really good point right what about delighting the client? Mm. Like, is that, would you say that that's a focus of ours and that, and do we do that? Well, I think we, I think we do it with our simple funding experience because it produces confidence. Nice job. Tom. <laughs> Tom, leave that in there. Tom's learning. He's throwing, he's throwing it in there. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a, you know, that's a focus of ours is, is how do we really delight the client? How do we get to know the client, understand them, make the decisions that are best for them, think about them in the way that we function? Um, that's a huge part of our DNA, right? Not, not abuse them, use them, yeah. but, <clears throat> you know, partner with them. Agreed. We're obviously in the business of making money, so we're not you know, being Pollyannish, but we're doing it under the guise of thinking with them and how do we add the most value to them yeah. uh, when all is said and done as opposed to just use them and, you know, abuse them, so to speak, right? So um, so it's good. It's good for us to just kind of think about this log magnetism. It's part of leadership trait. You have to be thoughtful about your own values. You have to be thoughtful about our values. Yeah. And you have to pull everything through that funnel. When you're getting a CRM, when you're making marketing material, when you're building out process, when you're hiring people, uh, when you're firing people, right? Like everything has to be pulled through the funnel of the law of magnetism and say, is this who we are? Um, is this our value system? And do we want diversity? Yes diversity of background and personalities and all those things, we have to have unity in the values. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Like you kind of hear, so that's just so important. Like we love the idea of diversity. We have to be unified on our values. Otherwise it's just absolute mm -hmm. chaos. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what we need core values on. And you absolutely want diversity of background. All those things are great because that's how you get new perspective. It's like, I didn't even think about that, right? But you have to be unified on your value system. Um, so that's the law of magnetism. Uh, you're either you're repairing or preparing at the end of the day. So there you have it.